Okay, so we were proving the Hilchus theorem. We already proved uh, one of the things that will help us to uh, complete the proof. One well, was that TTX, that is a limit in T and TX when angles to infinity, where T and T was ETAN, AN was the Schultz-Sida approximant, so that, uh, um, that were bounded operators of this very uh, uniformly continuous semigroup. So um, we proved this. The second thing is that TT is a C0 semigroup on X. Okay. So for the second one, we're going to use that, uh, well, we have a pointwise convergence of T and T X. Okay, so this would imply that uh, TT satisfies the functional equation. We have the T and T plus SX um, converges to T, T plus SX, and each one separately, we know that it will converge each one to T, T and T, S. Okay, and the thing is that we know that um, these two are equal. Okay. So, um, then, um, TT will be, TT will be a, um, a strongly continuous semigroup. Well, here we have only that it's a, a semigroup. The part that it is strongly will come from, well, first that the mapping T, TTX, this is a limit. Is a limit of um, of T n's. T n's are a continuous function. Not only the limit is the uh, uniform limit of continuous function. So uh, T T x is co continuous itself. Okay. This is for x in the domain of A. Then using the following proposition. That says that for a semigroup TT, the following are equivalent that is uh, strongly continuous, or that we have a delta and a greater than one, then subset such that the normal TT is less than equal to the M, and the limit when T goes to zero of TTX checks for X in the tenth subset. So this means that TT. Um, is a C0 semigroup. So the third one is that the semigroup has the generator ADA. That is to say that it's the same the generator of Tn and the one of T. Okay. So, not the same but the convergent operator. Okay. So, um, let's call the generator B with domain DB. Okay, the generator is the generator of, um, of TD. Okay, and we fix X in uh, DA. So we had uniform convergence of T and TX to TTX, okay? So uh, we know that in the compact interval, um, 0, T0, okay, because it was in 0, T0. We have that, uh, let's call the mapping Psi N, that is this mapping that I was uh, mentioning before, T N T X converges uniformly to Psi, that is the mapping of T to T T X. Okay, at the same time we know we can differentiate, let's put Psi N point, we can differentiate it and obtain a mapping that takes T to T and T A 
and x, okay, we know how this is the definition of uh, t and t. When we derive it, we know we will have a and x. We know that we have uh, um, the conversions of a and to a, okay. So we know that this converges uniformly to, let's say, new. the mapping new that takes t to t t a x this somehow implies differentiability of psi where the psi point of zero is equal to new of zero. This is because if you recall the definition of tt x is equal to the limit on n goes to infinity of t and t x and so we can say that if we take the derivative ttx it has to be the derivative of the limit tn x t. Okay, so it comes from there because we derivated take the derivative of psi n okay and then we um, derivate we can interchange these two the limit with the derivative because we have uniform convergence of psi n, the tn, t to the tt's, and we have uniform convergence of uh, psi n to nu. Uh, actually, we you can do it with uh, only asking that these t and t's uh, have pointwise uh, convergence and the derivative uniform. So that's why we will have the result. Nu of zero will be put to zero. We'll have ax, okay. And we've been working in x in dA. So this is valid for the domain of A, included in the domain of B. Okay, so A of x will be equal to A um, B of x, but just for x in the domain of A. Okay. By hypothesis, we know that if we choose a lambda, when it has a lambda is in the resolving set of A, and we'll have a bound. Okay, so we now we choose lambda, and then um, lambda is in resolving set, and so we have the lambda minus A is A. Ejection. Okay. Then we also know that uh, B is a um, generates a contraction semigroup. Okay. Generates. A contraction semi group. So we can use this theorem. We know that W in a contraction semi group is zero. So we have that lambda will be greater than zero. And so lambda will be in the resolving set. Okay. So, um, lambda is in the resolving set of B. Okay? 
Okay, so lambda is in the important set of P, then lambda minus P is also um, a rejection. And now from dB to X, lambda minus A was a rejection from the A to X. Okay. But uh, we we have seen that uh, um, if x is in the a, then a x is equal to b x. Okay. And we now we have that for lambda minus a will have to be equal to lambda minus b at least if x is in the main of a okay I put an x here and x here um, so I'm not going to prove it but if this happens this can only be possible only if dA is equal to db and a is equal to b now for all x. Okay, so we finally proved these three things. We proved that ttx exists for real x, that is a semigroup, a contraction semigroup, not only a c0 semigroup. In the second step, we proved that this is a c0 semi-contraction. And in the third step, we proved that it has a degenerator a d a. Okay, so we proved that it generates a c0 semigroup but a, a contraction okay there is a generation theorem in the general case I'm not going to prove it but I will state it it's by a fellow fellow um Miedera and Phillips of the year 1952. So let ADA be a linear operator, okay, in Banach space X, and we have W in R, M greater than 1, constants, then we have the following properties that are equivalent. First, ADA generates a, a C0 semigroup, okay, that satisfies TT less than equal than M W T. Okay, this is more general, we are not asking to be a contraction. The B will be that ADA is closed, densely defined. And for every lambda greater than W, we want to have the W, you know, that lambda is in row A, and uh, the norm of uh, lambda minus W is uh, uh, multiplied or lambda a all to the n is uh, less than equal than m for all n in n and there it is an equivalent for the complex numbers that is again closed densely defined for every lambda in complex numbers the real part greater than w one has that uh, lambda is in the resolvent set and the norm of all lambda a to the n is less than equal than m over real part of lambda minus w to the n. This would be the generalization of the Hill-Josita theorem.